Hey everyone, it's Dr. Calkins. Uh, today we've got week 14, chapter 9 questions. Lots of math, lots of problems, 100 questions total. So let's get to it. Uh, this first question uh, has two parts. It gives you the mass on the periodic table of 46 grams per mole. It also gives you these percentages. Either one can tell you the answer. I'm definitely going to use uh, the weight because then we just need to figure out who weighs 46. So for A, you would have 2 times 12.01 on the periodic table. You'd have 5 times 1.01 on the periodic table. And you'd have 2 times 16. Get that up, that's about uh, 32, it's about 5, it's about 24. Um, you're looking at over 50 there. Uh, so way too much. Do that for the rest of them, you're going to find out that C2H6O is the one that weighs 46. So we didn't even need any of these percentages in this problem. Uh, two carbons is 12.01 on the periodic table. Uh, six hydrogens, that's 1.01. And then uh, oxygen just at 16. Those numbers are going to give us that uh, 46 grams per mole uh, total. So again, when we're doing that, molar mass, remember, comes from the periodic table. So we're stealing 12.01, we're stealing uh, 1.01, rounding up, and then we're stealing that 16. We're we'll going to do that for each of those, just finding the one that weighs 46 will work for number two. Uh, number six talks about least uh, number of atoms. So then we're just looking at the subscripts, make sure you multiply across. So here we have two times a one, so there's two. Two times a four, there's eight. Uh, there's two for chromium, and then there's seven more for oxygen. So those we can just take directly. So we have 10 plus another uh, nine, so that's um, 19. Here we have two, four, and seven total. So there's seven atoms there. Here we have three, and then we have 12. Three times four. We have one more for phosphorus, we have four more for oxygen. So they're up to 15, 16, uh, 20 atoms. Here we have four, here we have one, and then we have six plus six plus six, that's a six times one, times a one, times a different one. So six, 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 that's 18, 19, and then that's 23, that's way too many. So they want the least number. The least number definitely has only seven atoms. Uh, two plus two plus three, and then that. Doing the exact same thing, just in a different way on number seven. They want the uh, correct sequent, uh, sequence of decreasing number. Well, we already know that it, this one has seven. That was the answer to the previous problem. So that should be at the end. So it's there and it's also there. Next ones we want would be uh, one that they didn't have above. Here we have three, four, and then another four, so there's eight. Here they have eight in the front, which is nothing compared to uh, three plus 12 plus one plus four, so way too many there. Uh, so here we go with uh, that one. Ammonium uh, phosphate, we did up here, it had 20. Number eight's a trick question. The number of oxygen atoms in one mole, the key there is one mole. One mole is Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. They say of oxygen, so oxygen is 3 times 4, so this would be times 12. So they want you to take the bait, they want you to take 12 because there is 12 oxygen atoms, but that would be 12 oxygen atoms in one aluminum sulfate. This is trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of aluminum sulfates, and that would be a multiple of 12 for oxygen that three times that four. So it is not the above because it's 12 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we're making sure that you're paying attention to that mole definition uh, in that particular problem. Number 11, they want the molar mass of 106.5. So again, if they give you the mass, that tells you to uh, go to the periodic table. Figure out which one of these is gonna be missing. So if we know already some of the mass, in this case, we know that XClO3, we know the chlorine, if we look on the periodic table, chlorine weighs about 35 and a half, plus three oxygens at 16 each. 
That's our 15.999 rounded up. We know that will be a portion of the mass. So that's the chloride ion, so 35 plus uh, 0.5 plus 3 times 16. That gives us 83.5 that we know. What we don't know is what's missing, and that's 106.5 subtract the 83.5, and we get 23. We go to the periodic table, and we figure out who weighs 23. Sodium weighs 22.9. So we can go there, and they actually had it rounded up for us already. So it's the front page. Let's go on to the next page. A lot of questions, a lot of math. A lot of students hate this chapter, you know, for good reason. Um, lots of different ways of looking at moles and math together. Number 14, we have to fit the formula of the alkane. We saw that back in exam three. Double plus two. So C10, H22, double would be 20 plus two, so that one fits. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 2, that's 20, that fits. 12 times 2, that's 24, plus 2, that fits. 11 times 2 is 22, plus 2, so all of them fit. So we did get lucky, we can't eliminate any of them uh, just based on sheer number of hydrogens compared to carbons. So let's just tackle this first one. Using the periodic table again, the second part says we need to have a mass between 140 and 150. Well, just by adding carbon, you're going to add 12 more, and that's definitely going to jump you through that distance. So let's see where we are, and then see if we'll have to subtract or add to get to that magic number. So in C10, we need 10 times 12.01 for carbon on the periodic table. Uh, we need 22 times 1.01 for hydrogen. If we get lucky with A, and we will, uh, that's all we want. So 10 times 12.01 uh, plus 22 times 1.01 and we get 142. And that's between our range of, um, that's grams per mole. That's between our range of 140 and 150. So this one's not gonna weigh enough. These two are gonna weigh too much for that particular answer. Number 15, very similar, but slightly different. We have an alkene formula. So notice it's double bond, half a double, number of hydrogens. So let's look for that. Uh, six double would be 12, so it can't be that one. 6 double B12, it could be this one. Let's say double 6 to hydrogen 12. Here would be double 5 to 10, can't be that one. And this one could work. So one of those two is going to be it based on the formula. Now we need to figure out who weighs between 65 and 70. We know if this one's too heavy, it has to be that one. So let's try uh, C6. So that's 12.01 uh, times 6 for carbon, and then 12 plus 1.01. 6 times 12 alone might be enough to get us out of that range. So 6 times 12, so just carbon, that would be 72. And if we add in another 12, it's going to be way over. So it has to be 5 times 12 plus the 10 times 1.01 to reach in that region. Number 21 gets us into the Avogadro's number uh, definition. Oh, let's skip one, 16. Uh, 16 says which one of the following quantities does not share the same molar mass when rounded to the nearest whole number. Uh, we've been doing a lot of molar masses in this uh, particular homework so far. The answer you're going to get on this one is going to be C. Um, let's just show you real quick how to deal with that. We have three times lead. Lead on the periodic table is gigantic. It's uh, 207.2. And then we have four times phosphorus, and then 16, which is four times four for oxygen, which is 16.00 phosphorus. I don't know that one off the top of my head, so back to the periodic table. Uh, 30.97, so about 31, roughly. So when you add those up, uh, three times 207.2 plus four times 31.00 uh, times 16. Plus 16 times 16. Uh, did that right? Get a thousand and one point uh, six. So three. Double 
like that. Three times 207.2 plus four times 31 plus 16 times 16. Yeah, so 1,001.16 is the answer there. It's gonna be different than these other ones. Um, to give an example, let's just do this one. It's very similar to the ones we did uh, earlier. That would be 12 times 12.01. On the periodic table for carbon, we have 22 times 1.01, .01, and then we have 11 times 16. This one's going to be very similar to the rest. Uh, so in this case, A, B, and D are about the same with a rounding error. So 12 times 12.01 .01 plus 22 times 1.01 .01 plus 11 times 16. Oh, I didn't type it in wrong. 342.34. So definitely the one that is different is the one that has that huge amount of mass for it, but the rest of them all um, within reason. But number 21. Number 21 says the sample of oxygen gas, so the tricky part there is oxygen gas is O2. So if we saw, or if at least you thought oxygen was O, you're already in trouble. So oxygen gas is O2. They say what sample contains Avogadro's number of molecules, so that's the whole thing, not the oxygen atom, it's the actual molecule O2, has a mass. So in that case, we just take 16.01 times two, and we get 32. And the reason we can do that is this is 32 grams per mole, and one mole is Avogadro's number. Molecules or atoms, atoms would be times two, in this case because of the subscript two. So that one's not so bad, but just for example, the, the one that comes up next, even though it wasn't asked on, um, this one says Avogadro's number of atoms. Avogadro's number of atoms, because of this two, you have to cut that in half. So you get 16 for that. So pay attention to whether it says atoms or molecules. If it says molecules, that's the whole formula. If it says atoms, look at the subscripts. You can do that on some of those other ones as well. 26 and 27 are the same kind of problem, just different numbers. Remember our second definition after Avogadro's number, uh, we had one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. We used that in that previous question. Our second one was in one mole, you get grams from the periodic table. So we're saying in 0.3 moles, we have 93 grams. So that's just the same relationship, but we don't have a mole, we have 0.3, and we don't have grams from the periodic table, we have 93. But it works the same way. So this is molar mass, and molar mass is really just any grams divided by any moles of the same thing. So here we just take our 93 grams and divide it by 0.3. This would match the periodic table when we divide because when we divide, we'll get per one mole. So when we do that, it's 93 divided by 0.3, we get 310. So unfortunately, in order to solve this problem, you have to go to each one of these, write out its formula, and uh, solve. When you do that for calcium phosphate, remember that's calcium uh, phosphate crosses a three, phosphate calcium crosses a two. Three calciums at 40.1, roughly. 2 phosphorus at 30.97, and 8 oxygens at 16 does actually give you 310 on the first go because it is the answer. The other ones will not. Um, if you wanted to check them, calcium chromate, uh, Ca plus Cr plus 4 O's, calcium nitrate plus 2, so calcium plus 2 nitrogens plus 6 oxygens, and calcium sulfate, all of those aren't going to make the 310 that we want. Very similar on 27. Same idea, just different numbers. So molar mass. When you don't have the periodic table numbers, when you just have random numbers, you can just put grams on top, which was our 1.56 grams, divide by 0 0.02 moles. So 1.56 divided by 0 0.02. We get 78. So it's going to be a very big compound. Compared to the last one. And when you do that, you'll get uh, aluminum hydroxide. So that's 
AL plus three O's and three H's. Uh, for practice, aluminum, for manganate, that's AL and then O4. Three manganese is gonna uh, add up quickly, not it's gonna be way too heavy. Uh, aluminum cyanide, and then aluminum nitrate. So don't forget to cross that three charge on all those. But we wanted to weigh 78, and that was gonna be eventually aluminum hydroxide when you add up aluminum, three O's, and three H's. Twenty-nine, just like twenty-eight, but with a slightly different spin. Sixteen milligrams. We need to convert to grams. There's a thousand milligrams and one gram. So now we're in grams. Now we can use the periodic table. So milligrams cancel. We need grams to cancel, so we can get to moles. Specifically, this is table salt. So that's in ACL. So that's in a. Uh, plus CL on the periodic table per one mole. That's one of our, it's our second definition. First one, Tavagadro's number, which we'll use next. Sodium on the periodic table is about 23, round it up. Chlorine about 35.5, so we're looking at about 58.5 um, roughly. So then that gives us to moles, because grams cancel. Moles need to cancel so we can get to um, formula units, which is just the compound in ACL. So let's get rid of moles. We know in one mole of anything, there's Avogadro's number of formula units. So FU in this case. Uh, so take 60, divide by 1,000, divide by 58.5, multiply by 6.02 second x to the 1, 23rd power, we get 6.2 times 10 to the power of 20. And hopefully that's a choice that we want. And it looks like, let her see. So again, that was uh, metric conversion first, molar mass conversion second, and then Avogadro's number conversion last. So that's a good example of using all of our definitions other than the subscript and coefficient ones. Definition on number 34, what's true about empirical formula? Uh, it may be different because molecular formula could be a higher multiple. So empirical formula is the lowest reduced formula possible. A molecular formula could be also its empirical formula or it could be a higher value. So if this was uh, say CH2O, this could be C6H2O6 or something like that. Molecular formulas are always, usually higher formulas than empirical, but not always. Number 35 uses the same kind of idea. What's true about this one? This is actually the same kind of example. Here we have a CH2O. Here if you reduce two, four, and two, you get that one, two, one that they have over there. So they both have different molecular formulas because their formulas have different subscripts. So molecular formula different, that's true. Empirical formula, they both reduce to CH2O, that's also true. Their molecular formulas are not identical because they have different subscripts, so only B is uh, incorrect, so A and C are correct. And 37, who has a empirical formula different, so that would be one that you can still reduce. Um, if you can reduce it, your empirical formula is going to be different than your molecular formula. So as you look at these, you can't reduce um, a 1, 2, 1 any further, a 2 and a 7 and a 3. So because of those odd numbers, you can't reduce. Because of those odd numbers, we can't reduce. But we do have odds here, but with 6, we can reduce this to a 1, 2, and a 1. So this one is different in its empirical formula from its molecular formula because it's reducible. And 39, we get back to a different kind of problem that we did, saw a little bit on a uh, number two. Number two just had a molar mass, so we hadn't, uh, didn't have to go this route. Um, easiest way to think about this one without getting into a whole lot of work is to use the percentage and match it through the law of definite composition of week two. So what I mean by that is if it's 40% carbon, we need to make sure that our answer is also 40% carbon. 
So let's go to A. If it's 40% carbon, we can take uh, carbon divided by carbon plus hydrogen times 100. That'll give us percent carbon, and if it matches 40%, it's the answer. That's a whole lot faster than taking these percentages to grams, taking them to moles, taking them to mole ratios, dividing by the lowest amount of mole ratios, and then finding a whole number that matches 15 minutes of your life you can't get back. This is a whole lot quicker. So for this, we need to take 12.01 divided by 12.01 plus 1.01. That's from the periodic table numbers times 100. Definitely not going to be 40%. This is going to be uh, probably over 90% because of its formula, but just for practice, 12.01 divided by parentheses 12.01 plus 1.01 that equals times it by 100 you get 92% uh, carbon because most of the mass is carbon so because this is not 40% it's not the answer when you go to B you're going to find the answer um, to do that one do the same thing Take carbon, divide it by carbon plus two hydrogens plus oxygen, so one plus two plus one, one plus two plus one. Using those same periodic table numbers, 12.01 for carbon, 12.01 for carbon again. It's a piece divided by the whole. The whole has all the pieces, including carbon. Two times 1.01 and then plus 16. Uh, when you do that, you'll get 40%. And that's what we want. The other two aren't going to match. Forty-two, very same thing, uh, different spin. So same kind of problem. You could take percentages to grams, to moles, to mole ratios, find the subscript, find a whole number, but that takes a very long time. Instead, what's faster? Uh, is to use the percentage and then match the percentage. So let's just take the first one, aluminum is 15.8%. Let's see who else is 15.8%. To save a little time, I'll cut to the chase on this one. Uh, you're gonna get through the first one, it's not gonna match, you're gonna get to this one, it will match. To do that, you need two aluminums divided by uh, two aluminums, multiply across that parentheses, so three sulfurs plus now 12 oxygens times 100. So aluminum in mass on the periodic table, 26.98. Uh, There's two of those, so times two. On the bottom, it's two times 26.98 again, plus three sulfurs. Sulfur is 32, roughly. And then 12 times 16, which is oxygen rounded up, times 100, uh, you're going to get that 15.8%. And that's what we want. So A is not going to match, but unfortunately you're going to have to get through A if you're doing this homework question in order to know that it's not a match. And we're just lucky that we found it before we got to D because then we'd have to go through four of those. But even going through four, probably still faster than the alternative, which is percents to grams converted to moles, converted to mole ratios to find a subscript that's a whole number. It takes a very long time. 43, the very same kind of problem again. Same problem, different numbers. So again, let's cheat. Let's use 73.52% chromium. Let's see if we get lucky. If not, we have to go through all of them and then we know it's D. Uh, you do get lucky on this one to find out that it is a uh, let's sh remind and show you how. We get three chromiums on the periodic table divided by three chromiums in the hole, plus two silicons in the hole, uh, times 100. So three chromiums, find chromium on the periodic table. 51.99, so about 52. We have two silicons. Uh, oops, it's on the bottom. So we have three 52 chromiums on the bottom plus two silicons, which is 28.1 times 100. And you're gonna get 73.5% chromium to match it for 43. So luckily we got that one that we got to A, we didn't even have to try B, C, or D. Love definite composition says that if your percentage is the same, you're the same. 
and that's what we want through a very shortcut kind of uh, pathway. 48, uh, another problem, very similar, uh, just a different spin on it. This one says lowest percentage of oxygen. So in order to uh, think about this one, we're going to have to do the exact same thing and uh, four times to find out who it is. Uh, because we're killing a lot of time already with the same kind of problem, I'm going to cut to the chase on this one as well. It is um, potassium carbonate. To find that percentage, you would take two Ks, divide it by uh, two Ks plus carbon plus three oxygens times 100. Different from over here where you just take K divided by K plus MN plus four O's. Different over here where you'd find, um, actually we wanted percentage oxygen, not potassium, so that wouldn't work. Um, we would take three oxygens divided by two Ks plus carbon plus three O's times 100. That would give you percentage oxygen that they asked for, I just overlooked that. So over here you would take four O's Divide it by K plus MN plus four O's times 100 just find the periodic table numbers. Here you would take uh, three oxygens divided by two aluminums plus three oxygens times it by 100. Here, uh, again, we're not looking for potassium, we're looking for oxygen. So three oxygens divided by the two Ks, the one carbon and the three O's. And lastly over here, uh, oxygen divided by two N's plus an O times 100. And you're going to find out when you type in those in from the periodic table that this one's going to have the lowest percentage. Uh, I'm just saving a little bit of time because we have lots of problems to go. Number 49 is a beast. It's the toughest problem of this semester. It's the longest problem of this semester. So I'll give you the uh, shorthand notes of it. You're going to find out pretty quickly uh, on 49 that there's two answers that are going to work. It says the empirical formula. Empirical formulas can't be reduced. So they're trying to see if you take the bait. C4H10 can be reduced to a two and a five. So that already tells you the answer because they're planted this one on purpose early because it's gonna have the same percentages as the answer. It's just not the empirical formula. This is a molecular formula. So that's why it doesn't work. These other two you're going to have to find uh, a little bit different, but the short of how you solve this problem, uh, as fast as I can uh, say it without showing it, you're going to have to find the percentage carbon so that we can treat it like a problem above. So if we know the carbon in this formula, which is some CH compound that we don't know, you add oxygen, you combust it, you get CO2 and water. That's the generic combustion reaction. We know that this carbon is this carbon. Once we know this carbon by percentage, we can then match it to one of the choices, which happens to be D in the end. In order to do that, we take our 15.2 milligrams. Uh, we need the percentage carbon and carbon dioxide because that's the same amount of carbon as the reactant uh, organic compound that we're looking for. So we take C divided by C plus two O's times 100. You get 27% uh, when you do that. So that's not the percentage of the answer, that's the percentage of CO2, but if we take 27% um, times the total, which is 15.2 milligrams, times the 0.27, when we convert that to a decimal, you get 4.2 grams carbon. That's the number we need to know how much this carbon was because it's the same. If we take then 4.2 grams of carbon, we divide it by the whole, the whole was five milligrams, this was milligrams, not grams. This was milligrams. So when you divide that by five milligrams of the CH compound that we don't know who it is, now times 100 we get percentage carbon for the answer, which is 84%. Now it's just like these. It just took two or three steps to get there, which is painful, both for you and for me. Um, so sorry about that problem. It's a little tougher than I was expecting when I put it on that long time ago. But in any case, you're going to find out that sure C4H10 and C2H5 have 84%. Uh, the percentages here were too high and then uh, too high, uh, probably too low maybe. But they didn't match in either way, in any case. Um, so when you do this, you're going to get C2H5. 